everyone's greetings and welcome. Thank you for joining. We are here right now. <laughs> Thank you for being present. I'm gonna take a moment to share this out. Um places happening right now. I'm here resting my leg. It's more comfortable on a bed. Okay. <laughs>
Thank you. 
Okay, if you have a question, you don't have a message. I'm right here. These earrings were made by Amber Scott. Amber Scott's like, uh, said I'm an angel, so I deserve to have angel wing earrings. And I'm wearing them now, Amber. So yes, these are beautiful earrings created by Amber Scott. Um, sacred Cherokee um, artist who um, does prayers while making the sacred pieces, like just like we're supposed to. <laughs> You know, we have to do prayers and visualizations while creating, so it's, it's healing medicine. Um, Amber also made that other, the other earrings that I had. Um, sadly, they broke, but they're, they were really, they lasted a really long while. And I think they broke because I'm wild. I do a lot. I have a lot of this hair, you know, and I have crystals in it. Maybe it like got caught on it or something. Okay, so do you have questions? Would you like a healing? Would you like a message? Or would you like to do more for me? You are stunning. Do you hear it now? <clears throat> oh my leg. I'm feeling much better though, like to be honest. It's like way less pain. So do you still hear static, Teddy? I think I need to like do this. Okay, it comes this way so you can see me. And I'm like here <laughs> again. Um, there, hi. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why it sounds like static. So I just, it says 9-11 on my phone. Maybe it's like some spiritual loved ones who want to come through from the towers blowing up. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to come on again. I think I need to fix it. Thank you. I'm like, thank you. I'm in y'all. It's nice to see you on there, Teddy. Hi. Heart healing. Is it staticky to you too, Maha? Dave? Is your name Maha, or is it Ma? Your your name is Maha Bali, and you say Maha Dave as an introduction. Um, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for your presences. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Um, my abilities have increased so much. It's healing so I'll see you again I think that there might be a little bit of static on the video so Teddy was telling me and um, I want to fix that oh my I had a brother named David they were trying to give birth rebirth David when they made, when I came in there. Yeah, I think that there was another child in there and then they prayed over the womb and I was, I inhabited or something. It was like a, supposed to be a, a being, they were like, um, they said Archangel Michael came and told them that it's going to be uh, someone who helps save creation and the prophet and the healer and will be named. They wanted, they were supposed to call me, they were, want, they were told to call me Aaron James, but I came in with a vagina. And they called me Faith because I came in as a miracle. Like they prayed at a place called Trinity Church. My brother who drowned at six and a half brought them. Both the parents were wild off their heads. And my brother brought them there. And my mom and my father and like a bunch of other folks, even like, um, I think they were called Illuminati Masons. They also um, spiritually did stuff. Like it was like a really large congregation of Masons too. They gave us a tomb inside of Oakland at the Piedmont. Um, not, I don't want to go in there. I want to be infinite. I'd rather be infinite than go in the freaking tomb with them. Um, but their their um, their their tombs are around the family's tomb, actually in like a circle around it, right next to Henry J. Kaiser. So I'm like, hmm. um, yep. 
but because of David's death, transformation, which I was later told by somebody else who's, who's a wombie, who thinks she's some part of the masonry, but she doesn't realize that they don't really have wombies in them, except for like different other psi organizations of them. It's not the same. There's like different groups, I guess. There's multiple groups and multiple types of groups and multiple types of groups. That's the way it is, right? Welcome to Earth. Um, <laughs> so that being told me that it was like a spiritual thing something that had to do with like a, like a sacrifice they said my brother wasn't dead and that was really hard to hear somebody tell me because I've always I've played with my brother's soul when I was a child I've had like I used to call psychics like psychic hotlines when I was a kid and I know they actually talked to me even though I wasn't 18 they just they're like oh my gosh they were so amazed to talk to me they were so excited and um, they gave me free readings. And they were like, yeah, there's someone there named David. I was like, it's my brother. And David's soul would play with me as a child. And I had visions of David. And then I gave birth to my other child, um, Doe. I'm going to say Doe because it's like the nickname. Doe. And um, it was actually Doey was the nickname. Like Doe, a deer. But Doey was what the dad. Or Doe. Um, and that baby has like really big eyes too, it's really fun. And um, that child would play with David as a child too. And that, after I gave birth to that babe, I didn't see David as often in the same kind of way that I did before. And even one of my guardians um, volunteered to protect that babe because that babe needed extra protection. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the ones that's like, are you sure you want me to go protect this lady? Just like, or that soul is like, um, because I want to be here with you too. I was like, it's okay. I think that babe's going to need extra help. So I think something's going to happen. And a lot's happened. So it was good that, um, I hope that happened. I think that guardian's probably going to come back to me soon because of the level of, um, yeah, I'm not going to go into details about that. Michael, oh, you said you're a boy. No, Michael doesn't even want to be called a boy. Let me tell you, when I met Arkane, so when I, Michael and I, we met each other um, before, but Michael came to me to help me heal my wings, right? <clears throat> and when Michael came to me, Michael was actually dressed in the long robe. He figured, I think that Michael figured that if it was dressed in a long robe, I wouldn't be sexually interested in it or I wouldn't think it's beautiful because it looks like the mixture of both. Like it's like a, a beautiful balance integration. And I really respect that in souls who can integrate both and um, be stable. <laughs> and I love it came through with the hair, with the sash, with the robe. I was like, really? Okay, this makes sense, fine. And the love is like, do you remember your name, child? I was like, Maya. I said, Maya. Because I, I like to sing my name when I speak to this, when I meet those who are on the frequency that I am I love to communicate in. Um, and that love Ed said, turn around, I'm going to help you heal and open your wings. I'm going to open your wings. I'm going to make your wings open. I was like, sweet, I've been begging for it. I literally was like going through some, I was really ready to have my wings open because I could feel them like growing. Like I could actually see it, the changes on my shoulders, my energy, my everything. I felt like I was like changing and transforming. And so Michael was like, um, turn around. It's like, okay. And then I was thinking, I was like, I wonder if Michael has a penis or a vagina. Because I remember reading that they didn't, that there was no gender. That, but then I was like, but aren't I, but I'm part archangel too. Because a lot of beings call me an archangel and they see my wings, my big wings. And I feel like I have huge wings. And I'm all light, you know, like I remember heaven. I remember being someone who could fly. I remember the beginning. And a homie hit me, smacked me on my shoulder for thinking like that. I was like, do you want me to help you or not? Don't think like that. I was like, oh, shit. I didn't realize you were so psychic. And so I like I had to like like wash myself with light to like not think about that, not focus on that. I was like, oh, because I was envisioning it as like a Kindle, like where it's just like 
and I don't think it wanted to turn into a Ken doll because I have very powerful, um, very, very powerful. And I think it was like, please don't turn me, turn it into a Ken doll, right? Because that's what I was imagining. Um, and then that love it, um, helped me transform. I felt totally clean and um, transformed. And then I walked down to um, where there were musicians. The band playing was Love and Light. Um, it's like two DJs and they produced some music. They collaborated and made some other songs and did a thing. And um, I could barely walk because at that time for those probably like 12 months then, maybe like eight, I was taking on the full moon, um, maiden and crone formations like in a, in an extreme way. I prayed that I wouldn't have to keep going through that so that it wasn't so extreme because it was really exhausting to go through that like that each lunar phase. And um, I didn't like the way it looked on me. I really didn't. Like if you look through some of my, yeah, I don't even want you to look in the past videos to even like try and find them. Um, but I had to, I had to heal myself from that because that was just a lot to, to experience. I didn't really need to go through that. And so when I detached from the idea that I had to experience changes in my body through the lunar phases, um, it was after that experience. So during that experience when Love and Light was playing, I was looking pregnant because it was a full moon. Totally looked pregnant. My, my knees, I, it was hard to walk. There were kids at that gathering who wanted to cut my hair because I wouldn't give them my chain shirt that was like super sexy and beautiful and I miss it. I wish I had another chain shirt. Um, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, I was working through a lot psychologically and then they stole my stuff there. They stole like journals and notebooks and writings and art supplies and clothes and shoes and tents and lots of stuff at that same exact gathering. Um, I tell you? Oh yeah, but I came through the speakers. Um, I sat on that stage and I was centering and trying not to feel concerned about losing my hair to some teenage kids who were jealous of it and freaking out because I wouldn't give them my stuff. They were like little bully kids and they saw that I was there like, is this nice being? And I was like, no, you cannot bully me. I'm like, I'm like a whole like five feet taller than you. <laughs> I'm like hovering over them like, what are you talking about? Like, no, I'm not gonna give you my clothes. Um, but yeah, I came through the speakers without coming through a microphone like that. Maybe I came through a microphone through the air. I didn't figure out how I did it, but I kept doing it. It happened regularly after that and I had to figure out how to stop it. Um, Cause it was kind of free. <laughs> it was it was extreme and I was hoping not to like lose friendships because I was coming through the radios and um, people actually acknowledged it. Um, so many beings. There was probably about close to over 500 beings there. So when I began to do that, they all turned towards me in like a hypnotic, like, um, like they were hypnotized and they started to bow before me and they started to worship me and they're like, come dance with us, please goddess. Oh, we need you. And I felt really, um, I felt really tired. Like I said, I felt very exhausted and, um, I felt pregnant. <laughs> And um, my legs didn't feel like they worked the same. It was really hard to walk. So what I did was I envisioned myself let it, levitating because I had already experienced um, being paralyzed after the beating that I had incurred in um, 2009, I think it was, 2008. So 2009, no, my child wasn't one year yet, so 2008. And, um, it was like at the end of 2008, Halloween. <clears throat> and I had to learn how to make my body function without having the ability to feel it. So I can make myself walk if I have to. Like I, I know how to float. I've, I've practiced levitation since I was a child. I know how to make others levitate too. Like that was something in the Bay Area, that's like a thing to do at summer parties. You know, like I learned that really early. 
And um, I practice it. I practice it really hard when I was like 14. I got really strong in it um, because I really, I found out that it's possible and I just decided to continue to practice um, my abilities, even though my parents um, threw away my stuff and went through my diary and went through my drawers and threw my candles and my books away. I continued to practice because <laughs> I had like um, ancestors coming to me and I had like, I, I have ancestors and guardians and guides. I'm the ancestor, but they're my loved ones and they came to me. So I'm so thankful. Um, but it's really interesting, you know, if you look at why I was there, what I experienced and um, the lessons I have to do with now. What did you say, Teddy? Oh, Archangel Michael came in with me. So I did actually go into the crowd eventually. So I floated in there, right? I literally, there's like a video of me and you, there's a video of me on YouTube floating in from that event. Like you can actually see me floating in. I'm not kidding you. I'll find the link. And um, I floated in and there was a being that approached me who was wearing a gold, like not a gold, a glowing like um, shell and had like blackish kind of bluish blackish hair then and the eyes were glowing like bright blue like it was not like from this planet and then it had that being had like guardians had like um, bodyguards usually the ones who like are interested they have bodyguards and stuff it's like they're like they know that I'm special and the being said you have to dance with me and I was like because I remember it is I remember that soul I remembered it from another planet and that wanted to marry me, it tried and I ran away. I did that with multiple beings. Um, it's not that I don't love them, it's that I don't want to get stuck in a poisonous situation and I have to be free to be of purpose some moments if they're not psychologically, emotionally and spiritually um, on that level but the same one that I'm supposed to be with. Like, why waste our moments with someone who's not supposed to be with us in that way? Um, spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, physically. We have to be in tune with what is healthiest for us as beings. So, um, oh, you said homeboy? Oh, I see what you're saying. You said that you didn't mean any disrespect. Yeah, no, Teddy, Arkin Michael, Miguel is more of like a non-binary. Most beings from the beginning are like a non-binary. We really don't hold on to the identity of gender. That's more of like, um, like the new, like the, the different incarnations that are not as ancient of souls from the beginning who feel like a gender is like a thing. Or because they went through battles and competitions and stress because of battles and competitions and stress based on like gender or race and different things like that. Um, tapping into the very beginning helps to wash through that experience so that it kind of it crumbles it and disintegrates it. So it's not like a it's not a disadvantage. No. Hi, Mitchell. How are you? Sorry I said your name like that. You feel someone else's presence. So many say that. So many. I have so many guardians, like even if you tried. You don't want to try and mess with me. Hi, Tonya. Greetings, love it. Um, yeah, I was having a talk with somebody recently, and I was telling her, thank you for joining, I'm going to be on Facebook, I should love once. <clears throat> I was telling that being that, um, things happen to some of those who intentionally try and hurt me, and it's not an acceptable thing to do when I am so important. And this is one of the reasons why I choose to be integrative with my 
functionalities. I don't always come online. I don't always answer messages now. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm too busy to clean my gasong. It's been sitting there for like months now, waiting to be repaired. You know. And um, I miss that reality of having moments and having all of it and plenty. And I do have plenty. I have exactly what I need. And my loved ones who I trust completely close to me. I'm very careful. I have great discernment of truth. And by me asking you to try to do that, it's coming from a place of experience. So when I give you advice and suggestions, it's coming from a place of experience. It's not coming from a place of, oh, let me guess and think what it is. Or let me channel it. I actually have studied and done research. I've been studying for many moons. I'm extremely intelligent and um, very functional. And um, prayfully, you can see and acknowledge that and work through the experiences of seeing that I have a womb and that you find comfort in the loving. I want you to also acknowledge that there's comfort in the wisdom, comfort in the information, comfort in the truth. And try not to feel condemned. I'm not judging you. I'm not looking down upon you in that way right now. I'm telling you that when I give you advice, I'm speaking from a place of experience, from a place of wisdom, knowledge, and education. Enough information to be able to tell you how to work on healing yourself. So each of us have a purpose here. Each of us. And I realize in some countries it's hard for you to acknowledge that a being with a womb and a vagina has the ability to lead things and to do things that are intelligent and intellectual. But right now, we don't have a waste for moments to deal with your arrogance and ignorance and ego. So we are doing our best with what we got and everything that's happening. And I wasn't planning on having to deal with court stuff for all of my children, not all of them, but some of my children like that. I wasn't expecting to go through that ever, you know? I didn't want to. And so I apologize if it feels a bit distracting some moments when you're watching my videos and I'm talking about my experiences. I believe that it's helping multiple beings because I get contacted by multiple single moms, beings who are leaving bad relationships where they're going, not bad, horrible relationships where their lives are in danger. So me talking up about my experiences from the past is actually helping others to get the confidence and the strength to leave those situations, to leave those experiences, to get out of that and to heal and to be friends and learn how to co-parent. You know, it's like an instruction book that you don't have to read when you watch my videos. So I'm very thankful to have these opportunities and moments to do this together. You asked something about beings. Oh, because there's, um, because I'm Venus. I have a lot of passion and sexual energy. It just comes with the package. Some moments, our souls are who we are. And in this incarnation, I've practiced a lot of celibacy. I'd say that I changed a lot and that I've gotten to a place of, it wasn't really like that before. Um, I didn't want to marry the kings. I didn't want to marry, not, not every king, just some kings. <laughs> but I didn't want to marry the ones that I wasn't supposed to be with. Um, I didn't want to marry those who I wasn't supposed to be with or have um, intimacy with all of them. I was very much being careful also then and it's interesting that I have about the same amount of children, except one of them in different incarnations came through as, as either a family member, like a, a sibling or a twin, or a soul that came through to communicate and to work with. So it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, hi and welcome. Blessings also of loving. Oh, Miguel, yes, Miguel is amazingly loving. We love the, we love each of them, all of those who are here. I always have a whole room full of Arcan 
That's what a lot, most beings say that I, not most beings, a lot of beings who can see and feel have told me that they feel that with my presence. So it's very light and very pure. I'm a very pure being. Well, my computer, or not my computer, my, uh, my little, what is it? My pedal is about to go off. I have to turn it off before it just keeps clicking. Click, 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 click. All right, my loved ones, I need to hydrate and nourish and I might come on again. Thank you for being there. Blessed light and pure love. Blessed loving.